record this a little bit differently today, just as I try to get all this to work properly. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, uh, we can get started. And uh, we're in the third chapter of First John, uh, making our way through this book. And this, this is a big chapter, and I, and I do love it, uh, but it's, it's complicated um, because it seems to contradict other things that we've read in First John. Uh, and so we've got to look at those uh, at those contradictions uh, and see what John is saying and why it might sound confusing or contradictory to what's been said. Uh, but from the beginning of this third chapter, the first verse, John says, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Um, and so right away, John uh, pulls our attention to the love that we have from the Father. Uh, I think this is very important as we go through this chapter, uh, through some passages that seem um, uh, difficult or confusing, uh, that right off the bat, John wants to ground us once again in the love of the Father. Uh, and if you've seen any of these YouTube videos, uh, these recordings of our Bible study, uh, I've been putting a verse from 1 John uh, at the very end of these recordings, uh, and it's that verse, uh, we love because he first loved us. Uh, because now in this chapter, John is going to be encouraging us to love um, and to fight against sin, uh, but all of that about the things uh, that we are called to do are going to be grounded in the love that we have from the Father. Uh, so John is speaking once again as this uh, very gracious old um, uh, apostle speaking to his congregation with words of love. See what love the Father has given us. Um, this, uh, this call to mind, a hymn, uh, maybe we'll sing it at the end of our session today, that hymn, What wondrous love is this, O my soul, O my soul. Uh, what wondrous love is this. Um, that's what John is saying. This is a wondrous love. Uh, that God has given us, that we are called children of God, that he has adopted us, that he has made us his own. And John says that is what we are. Um, and, and there are many passages of scripture uh, you, we might think about here when John says that we are called children of God. Um, there is that wonderful verse in Romans. Uh, it's Romans 8, uh, 17. Uh, this, is, uh, this is something that, this is, this is, language that is very much uh, part of John's vocabulary to speak about us as children of God. This really comes up in John's writings, uh, but it's not exclusive to John. Uh, you know, when we were talking about the Antichrist, uh, I, I said that that, is, uh, that word is very uh, particular to John. Uh, this, this, this word is not, the, to be called children of God. This is really all over the New Testament. Um, and I'll just read a little bit here from Romans. This is Romans chapter 8. Uh, verse starting in verse 14 Paul says for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption when we cry Abba Father it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Uh, so if we are children, this is good news. Uh, that means, one, we are loved by God. Um, and two, it means we are heirs. We have an inheritance. We receive something from God. And it's a big, it's a big inheritance. Uh, this, you're not just an afterthought here in the family will. Uh, God really gives you the, the, the riches of his kingdom. Uh, so we are heirs, uh, heirs and and. and Paul even says they're joint heirs with Christ. I mean, boy, uh, again, you're not just an afterthought in the family will. You're way up there with Christ. Uh, so John says we are called children of God, uh, and that is what we are. And then he says the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Um, and so John is speaking here about the, the, the suffering, the persecution that Christians face from the world. Uh, and he says the world didn't know Jesus, and so it doesn't know him. Uh, Jesus himself said something like this in, in John's gospel. Uh, that in John 15, verse 20, uh, that's where uh, Jesus said that the servant is not greater uh, than the master. Uh, and if, if the world, 
if the world mistreated the master, it's going to mistreat the ones who serve the master. Uh, so as children of God, uh, we have a great inheritance, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we are going to deal with trouble in the world uh, because the world didn't know Christ. Uh, and and this, this also harkens back to something we saw last week, uh, the fact that we do know Christ. The world does not know him, but we do. And, and uh, John, we heard last week saying that we have received this unction or this anointing from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and because we have that anointing, uh, we know Christ. Uh, because like we said last week, the, the Holy Spirit's ministry to us uh, is not that he, you know, yeah, not that he makes us, you know, do goofy tricks rolling around on the floor or something like that. Uh, the Holy Spirit's service to us, his gift to us, is that he gives us uh, people who preach the gospel to us so that we know Christ. Um, and so we have that anointing. Uh, and, and we know we have that anointing because we've been baptized, we hear the gospel preached, um, and so we know him. Uh, but the world doesn't. And because the world doesn't know Christ, it doesn't recognize who we are. Uh, we ourselves uh, don't even know who we are. That is, our own eyes cannot see this. And so now that leads into this, this second verse where John says, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. Uh, what we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Uh, so just as much as even the world doesn't know who we are as God's children, uh, really even we ourselves can't see this. Uh, John says it has not been revealed. Um, and I'm going to just uh, look back at, um, at, uh, at Paul's letters again here um, in, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Um, uh, Paul says something very similar. Uh, he, you know, Paul says, I, I'll look at chapter, actually, First cha Corinthians chapter 2, starting at verse 7. Paul says, we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Uh, and, and so Paul is speaking there also then about, uh, again, the ways the world did not recognize Christ. Uh, but it just the, the, this is about all of us, too, that we ourselves, not only the world, but we ourselves, uh, with our eyes, our, our ears, our hearts, we, we cannot make sense of this. Uh, that is the human perception, human eyes, human ears, human hearts can't conceive this. Uh, so even we ourselves cannot really understand who we are apart from the Holy Spirit, that anointing of the Holy Spirit, which is what John said about that unction or anointing of the Spirit. It's also what Paul said right there, uh, that God has revealed these things to us through the Spirit. Um, these are, and so they are spiritually discerned, which means they are discerned by faith. They are understood by faith. They are recognized by faith. Um, it, it's not something that we can just see uh, in ourselves. Um, and so there again in, in verse 2 here, uh, back in 1 John chapter 3, uh, uh, John says, uh, what we will be has not yet been revealed. Uh, there, there, is, there is something about you. There is a new identity that you have that you have not seen yet. It's true. It's real. It's already happened. And remember, the, the, the verb tense is important in John, that he wants to say uh, these things. You have, been, you have been given these gifts. But here's the other part of the verb tense. Uh, what you are and even what you will be has not been revealed. It's not, um, it's not clear. It's not plain. But what we know is this, John says, uh, when Jesus is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. So there's a day coming when we're going to see Jesus, uh, and uh, when we see him, we will even be like him. Uh, now, that, that's kind of wild. I mean, we will not be God. We will never be God, uh, uh, but we will be like him. Uh, and and it's, this is really interesting, because this, there, this has some echoes all the way back to the first, ver first chapters of the Bible, uh, you'll remember the temptation that the serpent gave to Eve and, and to Adam 
uh, was that they would be like God. Uh, but now that, that's a big problem. We know the devil is a liar. And so when he says they're going to be like God, it's not the same thing that John is saying here when he says that we're going to be like God. Uh, because we have to remember that what the, the Spirit was doing was he was telling Adam and Eve, okay, we know, okay, the serpent says, God told you not to eat that fruit, but don't, you don't have to listen to God, because if you do, then you'll be like him. Uh, they, they thought that this kind of wisdom, remember, this, this was the fruit uh, of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, and Adam and Eve thought, boy, that's, that's what we need to be like God. If we just know right from wrong, that's going to make us like God. We just need to be smarter. If we're just smarter, if we know more, that's going to make us like God. And that's, that's a lie. In fact, not only it, did, it didn't make them like God, it drove them further away from God. Once they knew this, the, you know, they had this knowledge of good and evil, they were hiding from God. They didn't want to be close to him. Uh, but John is saying this is a new kind of like God. Uh, and, and again, I, I'm going to refer back to Paul's letters. I, I think this is actually helpful when you read through John to kind of put Paul and John in conversation with one another, because these two apostles do have their own ways of speaking of things, but a lot of agreement. I mean, you're going to see a lot of agreement and overlap with Paul and John. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to just go back to, to Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, verse 29, uh, to think about what it means that we're going to be like God. And uh, in, in Romans chapter 8, uh, and I'll back even back up to chapter eight, verses verse twenty-eight. Paul says, "We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, in order that He might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom He predestined, He also called. Those whom He called, He also justified." And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Okay, that's again Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 28 to 30. Um, uh, Paul says we're going to be like God. We're going to be in, uh, God is making us, uh, giving us new, new life in the image of Christ. Again, there are echoes here uh, with those first chapters of Genesis. Remember, from the beginning, uh, unlike the rest of the animals in creation, you and I were all made in the image of God. Uh, you know, in male and female, he, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them in the image of God. Uh, this, we lost this. I mean, this, 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 this image of God, this is something that was lost in, in the rebellion of sin. Uh, that then uh, we were no longer in God's image, but in the image of the devil. And, and yeah, last week we talked about this. You know how, gosh, am I the Antichrist? And I said, well, again, the Antichrist is really uh, the public teaching against uh, the gospel. But Jesus has no trouble saying, get behind me, Satan. Uh, so, you know, if, if you feel like, boy, that, that means I've got some real evil inside of me. Well, you're in good company. You know, you're right there with St. Peter. Um, but, you know, God, uh, Jesus still loves and redeems us. So don't be afraid of that. Uh, but so, yeah, it, we have lost this image of God. Uh, even uh, Jesus would say there, you are in the image of Satan when you do not trust. Uh, Jesus. But now this good news is that we have this new birth uh, so that we will be like him. And in the kingdom of heaven, we will not be God, but we'll, we will be like him. Uh, or as Paul says, conformed to the, to the image of Christ. Uh, this is no longer now in the image of Satan, but now in the image of Christ. Uh, and I think Paul, it was helpful there in Romans to spell that out. What does this mean to be in the image of Christ? Uh, you, are, you are in God's family. Uh, you have been predestined, called, justified, glorified, uh, that we will be like Christ, uh, that where, where we will, in heaven, we will no longer be affected by sin, uh, death, fear, sadness, any of that. All of that will be behind us, just as it is, it is behind Christ. Um, and we'll see him as he is. Uh, and uh, this, this again, I'm, I'm, you know, just hear some echoes there of, of Paul's letters uh, that we will, in, we will see him face to face. You know, right now we see as in a mirror dimly. Uh, you know, it's not, a, it's, it's hard to see God. Uh, we can only really see him through faith. Uh, but in heaven, it will be face to face, very clear about who he is and who we are on account of him. And so then in the third verse, John says, and all who have this hope in Christ, in him, purify themselves, just as he is pure. 
Um, now John is speaking about the, the battle, our daily battle against sin. Uh, we belong to Christ, and so uh, we, we don't want any sin in our lives. Uh, now, uh, we should remember those, those verses early in this book of uh, this epistle of 1 John. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, so every one of us, we would be fooling ourselves uh, to say we have no sin. Uh, but John is going to say, now, what are you going to do with that? Well, you confess it. You ask for God's forgiveness. And then you, you purify yourself. You, you seek to get rid of it. Um, you, you seek to, to you know, not let sin be the boss in your life. Uh, you serve your neighbor. Uh, you act in love uh, towards your neighbor. This is uh, purifying yourself, getting rid of that sin that's left over. Um, now we know that there is an ultimate purification that comes by Christ alone, that we have by faith alone. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, because God has done all of this, because he has loved us so much, yeah, we, we turn to our neighbors in love. And, and we want to, to love and serve them. Now, I'm just going to pause really briefly to say it is 11 o'clock on the 11th day of the 11th month. So uh, just we'll give a, a shout out again uh, to all of those who have served. Uh, ring a bell if you have one. Ding, a ding, ding, ding. Um, and uh, thank you, God, for the freedom you've given us uh, in this country. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to dive now back in now to this fourth verse. And again, this is where it gets kind of, I think, tricky and can be a little confusing. Because now in, the verse, in verse 4, John says, Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Um, and uh, this, this is very similar to what Jesus said in John's Gospel in Reformation Sunday. Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Um, the slave does not have a place in the household. The son has a place forever. Um, so, uh, you know, to commit sin uh, is to be under the wrath of God. Uh, to be lawless, um, not in the sense of being free from the law, uh, but rather, uh, that is, by faith we are free from the law in a very good way. Uh, but now John is speaking about a different kind of lawlessness, uh, to, be, to be guilty, to be under the law's accusation. Uh, the law accuses us, calls us guilty because we commit sin. Um, and so uh, uh, now John says in verse 5, you know that he, that is Jesus, was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. All right, now, uh, good to keep this in mind. Jesus uh, came to forgive sinners. That was his mission. Um, but what he gives us is forgiveness for sin, not permission for sin. Uh, so don't go to Jesus looking for permission. Uh, you go to Jesus for forgiveness. Uh, so again, John is calling us to take up the fight against sin um, and the sins in our own lives, uh, to, to say we are, we are covered in the, 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 the robe of Jesus' righteousness, uh, and, and that is all we need before God. Uh, but uh, again, we want to continue to fight against the sin uh, that is underneath that robe, because uh, that sin, that sin it, hurts, it hurts our witness. To Christ, uh, when when we uh, when we sin, it 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 makes it hard for us to to convince the world of Jesus's goodness, um, and that sin hurts our neighbors. Uh, so we want to fight against it. Uh, so G John says Jesus was revealed to take away sins. In Him there is no sin. So Jesus He forgives it. He doesn't just permit it. Uh, and in verse six, no one who abides in Him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Um, now, that's a strong statement. No one who abides in him sins. And we're going to see this now in these verses ahead that John is speaking about a double life that Christians lead. Uh, we have a new birth in Christ. And so that old sinner, uh, we're, we're constantly ourselves at war with ourselves, uh, the new creation uh, that is made in the image of Christ, fighting against the old creature, uh, who is the child of the devil. Um, no one who abides in him sins. Uh, again, th and it's shocking because this is the same guy who said, this is John, who said just a couple chapters earlier, uh, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Uh, but John is telling us here to fight against our sin. 
because Jesus gives forgiveness, not just permission. Um, and so uh, the, the old creature of sin uh, does not see Jesus, doesn't know Jesus. Uh, and so in verse 7, John says, Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Um, everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil, uh, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Um, uh, and, and so uh, everyone who does what is right is righteous, uh, just as he is righteous. Now, this, this also means that the, the truly good things that we do, the things that God actually likes, uh, those good things come out of faith. Uh, that is, we do what is right um, because we are righteous in the same way that a, a healthy tree makes healthy, good fruit. Um, and if you want really good fruit, you're going to have to make, you're going to have to make the tree healthy. You know, if the tree is sick, you can't expect to get good fruit out of it. And what you need is a healthy tree. Uh, and so John says, everyone who does what is right is righteous. Um, that is to do what is really good in God's eyes depends on faith. Uh, we must believe in him or else our good works don't count for squat. Um, uh, we do what is right uh, because we are righteous by faith, uh, just as Christ is righteous. But everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil. Uh, now, this also, there's an echo there with John's gospel, uh, where John uh, said, uh, this, is, this is in the eighth chapter of John, I think I referred to this also last week, uh, where John is, is wrangling uh, with the people who don't believe in him. Uh, and, he, and he says to them, uh, this is John chapter 8, he's, verse 44, he says, You are from your father the devil, and you choose to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Um, uh, so Jesus uh, will say now, uh, that uh, when we don't trust in him, uh, when we do evil, uh, we are behaving as uh, children of the devil. Uh, that they're, they're, you are either you are born of God or you are born of the devil. And now the fact is, both of these things reside in us, okay? Uh, you know, we are, uh, this is that old, again, uh, that old phrase, you can say it in Latin, simul justus et peccator, uh, which means simultaneously saint and sinner. Uh, so Jesus, uh, or John here is speaking about uh, that old sinful nature, um, that which, uh, which sins because it's born of the devil. And, and again, you know, John, it really kind of shows, I've said this before, he really kind of goes to, very, to, to some extremes. It's not, you're a little bit good, you're a little bit bad, uh, but you are, I mean, either acting as child of the devil or as child of God. Um, you know, again, these two natures fighting inside of us, these two identities, uh, these two yous uh, fighting inside of us. Um, and so now, again, in the middle of this verse 8, John says, the Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Uh, this is why Jesus has come, to destroy sin. Uh, and uh, so again, not just to give permission for sin, but to forgive it and destroy it. Uh, this also has an echo with that those first chapters of Genesis, because after Adam and Eve ate the fruit, God put a curse on them, you know, pain and childbearing, uh, pain in working the ground and laboring for your food, but also he put a curse on the serpent. And he said, one day the seed of this woman uh, is going to crush the head of the serpent. Uh, that was Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 15. Uh, so th th this, was, this goes all the way back to the beginning. God said, one day I am going to bring a child into this world who will crush the head of the serpent, uh, or as John says, uh, to destroy the works of the devil. And so now in verse 9, John says, Those who have been born of God do not sin because God's seed abides in them. They cannot sin because they have been born of God. Uh, and, and so once again, we, have, we need to understand this, this language of, of rebirth, new identity, new you. Uh, and, and we can even now look back to uh, the, one of the previous epistles we studied, First Peter, uh, first Peter says this kind of stuff, uh, speaks about this new birth, uh, born of a new kind of seed. I'm going to look back at uh, First Peter, uh, the first chapter, 
uh, in verse 3. This was uh, 1 Peter where he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, or jumping ahead of, of, a few more verses, the end of that, this is still 1 Peter, uh, that first chapter, uh, verse 23, Peter says, you have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. All flesh is grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. Now the grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Uh, so uh, we've been given this new birth with this imperishable seed, not like the seeds of this world that, um, you know, create plants that come and go, uh, you know, flourish and wither, uh, but rather a new imperishable seed. So you have been reborn um, uh, of God. And this new you, this new you uh, does not sin uh, because it, it cannot sin because it, it's been born of God and God does not create sin. Um, so this new you is just perfect and blameless. Uh, and, and John is, 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 this is John telling us to fight against that old life of sin, uh, not just to give that old life the reins, uh, but to say, no, 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 we don't want the, the old you to have the reins. Um, that, because when the old you has the reins, again, it, it hampers our witness uh, because uh, we, we give God a bad name when the old you is holding the reins. Uh, but also, um, uh, again, for the sake of the neighbor, uh, we fight against sin for the sake of the neighbor, because the old sinner, when the old sinner's holding the reins, nobody is safe. Um, so John saying, fight against this. Um, this is not who you are. Uh, so verse 10, John, this is again, uh, going back in first John, uh, verse 10, he says, the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do not do what is right are not from God, nor are those who do not love their brothers and sisters. Uh, so John, um, you know, is saying that our works uh, give evidence uh, of, of who is sitting in, in this, who's sitting this, in the saddle, you know, who's holding the reins, it becomes clear. Um, you know, not doing right, not loving, our brothers and sisters, uh, that's not from God. Uh, that's from the devil. Uh, so John, you know, speaking as this elderly apostle uh, to people he loves, uh, saying, don't, don't do this. Uh, that's not who you are. That's, that's not from God. Um, you know, you are, you are God's children. Um, and because you've received such great love, again, we love because he first loved us. Um, I'm going to pause there uh, this week. Uh, that's plenty for us to go on. And uh, I'll ask uh, what questions, uh, whether, it's, whether it's about this reading or anything else, what do you think? It's, like I say, it's, it's kind of tricky. It's kind of a hard passage. I mean, John seems to be undoing things that he has said. Uh, but uh, I think it helps uh, to remember, again, that we have this double life, uh, the old life and the new life. Uh, and and this this is some this is how law and gospel preaching works. I mean, it's 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 it it, it speaks to us in the dynamics of our life. Um, that uh, law and gospel preaching is not just now you understand the doctrine and now you will be fine if you remember the doctrine. I mean, it's not how it works. I mean, this this doctrine, this preaching, it keeps coming at us in our lives in a very daily, ongoing way. Um, law and gospel, you know, the the, the powerful word of the gospel. And yet, nonetheless, it's word of the law that says, don't forget your neighbor. <laughs> don't forget your neighbor um, uh, and, 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 and give glory to God. Uh, but then also that gospel again, because the, the good news is that when we do sin, we have this great hope, this great promise from Christ. Um, so again, when, when we sin, the th that when we do sin, the thing to do is to simply confess that, ask for God's forgiveness and trust in that forgiveness. The thing not to do is to just keep on go on sinning and say, well, this is great. I've got forgiveness. So I'm just going to keep on hurting people. No, <laughs> that's, that's not what it means. Uh, it means we confess it. Uh, we seek forgiveness. So uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, lot, lots of big stuff here. Uh, anything strike your fancy or uh, prompt any comments or questions?
Yeah, please, Denise. Denise, I can't hear you. Um, I can see your boss moving. Denise, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> There. Yeah, good. Please. Okay. I always have this um, inner fear that, you know, that we cannot see him or see us, like you said earlier, without the Spirit. And the Spirit is given to us by God. And so I feel like I have so many times in my life where I feel like, um, I don't know. Oh. Just that, I, it's just like, you know, like, will he give it to me? Will he, you know, I'm afraid I'm, I'm not worthy of it or if it's, or what? Yes. Yes, great, great question. Um, and, and yeah, because without that, without that anointing, we won't know him. We won't know him. We won't even know ourselves. Um, and, and then it's, I think, great to then remember how generous God is in giving to us his spirit. Um, and, uh, you know, every, every year on uh, Rogation Sunday, we go outside and you know, we pray outside at the beginning of the farm season. Uh, and because we're praying for God's blessing on the farm season, we hear that the passage where Jesus speaks about uh, coming to him and, and to God in prayer. And he uses the, the example of that friend who knocks on your door at night until you get out of bed and give him what he wants. And, and this, so we use it on rogation because we're thinking about prayers for the farm season. But uh, what Jesus then go, goes on to say in that passage is that if you who are evil know how to give good gifts, you know, if, if you who are sinful can get your butt out of bed and help somebody in the middle of the night who's hungry, he says, don't you think even more so your father will give his Holy Spirit to those who ask? Um, so, you know, Jesus is pointing there to this generosity of God, specifically with the Holy Spirit, that he does not withhold. Uh, and so simply, uh, when, if you are ever concerned about this, Think about that passage and simply ask God to give you his spirit. And then also remember uh, when it is in the scriptures, when God gives his spirit to people. Um, this was, it's the promise of your baptism. Uh, this is what John the Baptist said, uh, that uh, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Um, it, it's what happens actually in scripture when people are baptized, the spirit comes on them. Uh, it's what happens when uh, the apostles preach to people now. And uh, right now we're in the, the book of Acts. If anyone is reading uh, in the, the 2020 challenge, we're in the book of Acts. And this is one of the recurring themes of Acts, is that when the apostles preach, the Spirit comes upon people uh, and, and, and creates faith uh, where there had been no faith. Um, and so, uh, you know, that what, what do we do when we're worried about the Spirit? We ask. Uh, we listen uh, to the gospel, um, and this can be uh, listening in moments like this in Bible study or something you even ask a friend. Can you please tell me again about Jesus? I need to hear it. Um, it's listening, you know, to the, the preaching that happens uh, Sunday after Sunday. Um, these are the ways the Spirit comes. Um, and, and this was a really, big, a really big theme in the Reformation, actually. Uh, because there were those who said the Spirit comes whenever he wants, but he doesn't need, the Spirit does not need to work with the Word or the sacraments. He'll just kind of come if we, oh, if we just, if we just try hard enough. <laughs> um, and, and this was something Luther had to fight against. I mean, Luther was fighting against these spiritualists, and these were the kind of people who would say, yeah, you know, the Spirit comes and there's gold dust falling from the sky or something like that. And Luther would say, no, uh, the Spirit comes through the Word and through the sacraments. Uh, through these means, uh, God has identified the means that he comes through. Uh, and it's not whatever we invent. It's the ones that he told us. And so, uh, yeah, the, the spirit, how, how do we get this anointing? Well, again, remember the verb tense. John will say, 
You have received this anointing. Uh, you know this good news, uh, and, and you will and you will keep hearing this good news. And in this way, God bestows His Holy Spirit. So, uh, when concerned about that, then you go back and you say, "Okay, tell me again. Uh, tell me the good news again. Uh, I I need this. Um, th this this is the syringe that carries the medicine. I I need to hear that again." Yeah, Nancy. So, so I get it straight in my head. Um, we always have the Holy Spirit in us because of baptism. Yeah. But our behavior turns us deaf to him, and that's why we need the word more frequently. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. It's a good way of saying I, I it. I was a little confused there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. Um, right. Uh, that's a good way of saying it. Uh, yeah. Again, we have this double life. Uh, the old life and the new are at war with each other. And this, this is one of the things that the old life, the old Adam, the old Eve, the old sinner does. He goes like this. Okay. Uh, he loves to close your ears. <laughs> Don't listen. Okay. And he, all, he has various ways of doing this. You know, one, sleep in on Sunday, you know, or find better things, better things to do with your time uh, on Sunday or Wednesday morning or whatever. I mean, that, that's one of the ways he does it. Um, or, you know, you're even even when you're sitting there on Sunday and you're like, oh, man, uh, I've heard I've heard this before, you know, boring. You know, uh, you know, the, the, the devil has all kinds of ways of doing this. But you're right. I mean, yeah, we have this promise of the spirit. Uh, but the old life of sin, um, the devil, are, are, are hard at work uh, to close our ears. Um, and and, and uh, why wouldn't they? I mean, because the gospel, it means life for us. But what it means for the old sinner is death. You know, and, and so, it, yeah, for, for the old you, the old sinner, the gospel is like reading your own obituary. So he doesn't want to hear it. Um, so yeah, that you have this spirit, but uh, the devil will do what he can um, to keep you from hearing the spirit speak. Denise got me thinking with her question about that. Um, that was yeah. a good question, Denise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is a good question. All right, folks, any more? I love how we, I love how this group, we just stay at the surface, don't we? We just kind of, we deal with this, we deal with those little things, right? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. We, we like, we like to go deep here. We like to dive deep. I, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, uh, this is the, the dynamic of law and gospel that, you know, we're seeing here in John. I mean, John will preach the gospel. And then he'll, he'll work on us. I mean, he'll work on the old sinner. Uh, he'll club us, um, poke us. Uh, but the, maybe just to, you know, it'd be good to remember, you know, this is how John, this is something we read at the end of last week's session, uh, where John is, 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 he's using a little bit of fear, I said, you know, for the sake of the ones he loves. He says, he says, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, so John is going to work on us here. Um, he's not giving out a free pass. He will give out the gospel and forgiveness. Uh, but then he's going to keep on working on our sins. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> not fun. But Full-time job. Full-time job. You bet. It is. <laughs> it's a great way of saying it. Yeah. The spirit has a full-time job. Um, and, and, and it's over time with some of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. So what do we do when, when we're feeling the, the accusation, when we're, when we're, when we're afraid, confess and, and hear the word of, of forgiveness again. Um, if you would grab one of these, grab, grab a hymnal if you have one. Yeah. Uh, go to 385.
385, what wondrous love is this? And that's how John begins this chapter. See what love the Father has given us. righteous frown Christ laid aside his crown for my soul for my soul Christ laid aside his crown for my soul to God and to the Lamb I will sing I will sing to God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am. While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing his love for me. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. So what wondrous love is this? See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's wrap up in prayer. And uh, all right, let's all fold our hands. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, uh, thank you all. Stay warm, stay safe. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, and just so you know, I, when I do post this one on, on YouTube, I had to record it in a different way this week. Just like I'm saying, I'm having technology issues. Uh, so your, your faces are on there, and I hope that's okay. Um, <laughs> you all look lovely. So uh, I hope nobody feels shy. Looks like everybody will be okay with that, all right? Don't be surprised if you see yourself on YouTube. Now you're, you're, you're famous. You're a star. <laughs> Hold the autographs. <laughs> 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 you bet. All right. Good to see you. We'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.